So if you've been following along with our Instagram page or watch some of our other videos, you'll know that we are planning for a, a longer trip, a multi-day trip into the Georgia Traverse. And in that, we have about nine days now before we leave. So it's about time for us to start going through our camping box and some of our other things to start getting organized, cleaned up, figure out what we need and what we don't need. So in doing so, we figured we'd kind of take you along through that process of going through our, our camping box and adapting it to this trip we're about to go on, taking out the things that we don't need and and putting in some of the things that we think we might need. It's gonna be a little colder, expected to rain, so we're gonna take some of those things into consideration. But in doing so, we figured we'd show you what our normal box looks like, and this will give us a chance to get organized with uh, with this trip coming up and kind of taking inventory of what's in here. So we'll take you along for the ride. So I swear this box opens and closes just fine. It looks like it's a little overflowy, uh, but it does it does close up. Things to consider when choosing your box is the amount of space that you have in your car uh, or your truck. You also don't wanna go so large that you end up packing everything that you don't need and, and and just kind of taking up space there. So choose a box that fits the things that you need. I would choose a box that is waterproof and dustproof. This box is neither of those things. Uh, so something that my wife and I are starting to consider. There are some companies that make dustproof uh, waterproof boxes like Pelican Case. Rome is coming out with some really, really cool boxes and I'll link all that stuff down below. But anyway, this is a Sterilite. I think it's made by Sterilite. It's in Walmart. I'll link it if you are interested in it. It's got little wheels on it. They don't do a lot in the sand, but it just it's, it fits our needs for now. So, without further ado, let's get into it. We bring a myriad of little card games for the girls and, and us to play after dinner. There's Uno in here, there's Go Fish, there's several different variations of Uno, a regular, normal uh, aviator card deck, and just uh, things to kind of pass the time at camp after dinner or while we're getting set up for the girls to play. Uh, the other thing that we we bring is this little portable laser tag set, lets them get running around, lets up some energy from being in the in the truck for a couple hours. It's also just good fun. So, packs up really small and easy. Really easy. Laser X, I think. Super portable. We wear them in our band. All right, the other thing that we have in here is a couple hammocks. Uh, we have four total hammocks. In here, there's only two. We can make the decision of whether or not we want to bring all four or just a couple. Right now, we have two in here. So, that fits in here really nice. And like I said, this is constantly adaptable. This can be a living, breathing box of things that you think you need. GSI Outdoors, French Press Cups. These things are clutch. These things are super handy. If you really enjoy coffee or hot beverages like we do in the mornings or after a long day of, of wheeling, you'll see that these come in handy. So you can put coffee grounds down the bottom, fill it up with water, let it steep for a while. You can just French press it out. And now you have your travel cup uh, full of coffee, ready to go and not burn your hands because it's got some cloth coverings. These things are dope. I will link these highly recommended. Uh, so We'll talk about our first box over here. This is kind of our all things fire, electronics, flashlights. This gets us a setup for when the sun is going down. So in this case is our Jackery charging kit. We have a Jackery Explorer 160. Fits our needs perfect, super tiny, super light. Let's us charge our devices at night and run the lights inside the tent. And that gets us by. So that's how we charge that as we go. Speaking of the lights in the tent, this is the uh, cigarette light adapter and the other cords to make all that happen in the in the CVT tent for the LED light strip. We have a couple different styles of lanterns and you can probably see these in, in some of our other trip videos that you have. You see these kind of milling about. Uh, super bright, rechargeable, not rechargeable, something to consider, but both LED. We have a uh, solar powered rechargeable flashlight. This thing is actually pretty cool. We like things that serve more than one purpose, right? So you can take this end cap off. And you can also charge devices off of it, off of this small solar strip. It's gonna take a while to charge a cell phone or something like that, but it gets you uh, out of a bind if you currently are without power and wanna make a quick phone call. I'll link this one down below too. This is called a hybrid light. Uh, bright thinking, it's got a couple different modes. The batteries in here last a wicked long time. Great light, highly recommended. And then we have our little BioLite camp stove. I've talked about these before, these things are awesome. They run off wood, have a thermal couple that will generate electricity and you can charge your device off of it. And then the rest in here is just a couple headlamps. We get the Olight headlamp, I'll link that down below. Miscellaneous, this is a Maglite LED XL50. Uh, fits in your pocket, super bright. Fire starters, ferro rods, some matches, and a couple lighters. Uh, so that's, in, that's what's in this bin. I guess moving right to left, we'll come over here. This is our kind of our cooking bin, our eating bin. We have a Fold out pan that we picked out, out of uh, Walmart for pretty cheap, if I remember correctly. This thing is pretty clutch, it's non-stick, it folds up really small. You can use it over a campfire, a camp stove, it even fits on the BioLite. And I will, I'll link that down below as well. I can't remember, but I don't think it's too expensive. A couple mess kits uh, for the girls, you get some plates in here. They store up really nice and 
it uh, gives it a place for the girls to eat, eat their food. Get this out of the way. It's a uh, pretty beat up roll of tin foil, but tin foil always comes in clutch. It's always good to have a roll of tin foil. We have some silicone pot holders. Let's just get the cast iron off of the campfire without burning our hands too, too badly. And then within this bin, we also have tongs, spatulas, a knife or silverware, our plan B for coffee. If you watched our dirty decaf video, you'll know we forgot our coffee. Uh, these are folders, instant coffee. Not our first choice, but it'll work. Then we also have some spray, olive oil, and then a multi-shaker of different seasonings, salt, pepper, uh, garlic, curry powder. And you can refill this as well. We picked this up at Walmart, really, really cheap. Uh, great option. And then we have some paper plates, a couple expandable hot dog or marshmallow roasters. These are pretty handy. They stand out so you stand out from the fire and you can just spin them. And uh, I'll try to find those on uh, Amazon. I'll link those for you as well. And then we just have a tablecloth for the picnic tables. We end up at a state park or a KOA or something like that. You know that sometimes those picnic tables are in rough shape. So throwing a tablecloth on there is super helpful. This third bin down on the right hand side is our toiletries and bug spray sunscreen type bin. So we have these magnet tactical microfiber antibacterial uh, towels that do an excellent job of kind of wicking away moisture for after a shower or dip in a stream or uh, any number of things you might need a towel for. These things are awesome. We got one per, per family member. Uh, and then you can kind of see the rest of the stuff we got in here. We got a mosquito head net. We got our bug sprays and our sunscreens. And then we have a couple different toiletry bags, some toothbrushes down at the bottom, some toothpaste, uh, some wet wipes, dude wipes, things like that to kind of get us cleaned up at the, the end of the night. Definitely recommending having a, having a toiletry bin. All right, moving over, this is kind of our junk drawer of bins. In here we have a, made by OXO, OXO maybe, but it's a, it's a dust bin. It's a small broom and then a dust bin with a little rubber edge so you can sweep up the tent or you can uh, kind of get the dirt out of the truck bed or out of the truck or, or anything like that. You get cleaned up, stores up really nice. Super handy, we use it all the time. Couple spare baby sacks if you wanna dry your dishes or just kind of keep things together, just have a place to store stuff. Uh, a couple of those. This is our camping logbook. Back before we were making YouTube videos, we would write in here, we still do, we write in here. Our trips kind of keep logs of uh, the destination where we were, the weather that day, uh, campsites for next time if we found some stuff. Um, that we didn't necessarily log on guy or any of those options. Things that we need to pay attention to, and then some, some notes and some photos about what happened while we were camping, stuff to look back on and, and kind of relive. And uh, it's a really cool little book. This is our kind of our emergency kit for our tent, our CVT, rooftop tent. And here are some tools, spare parts, a patch kit for not only the cover, but the tent itself. Um, so if we need to fix anything on the tent or any of the attaching hardware for the ladder. It's all in here, one spot. A pair of long wool socks, about 100 feet of 550 cord. You never know when you need cordage, so that's good. good option to have. A couple more extra tent stakes that didn't quite make it in the, in the tent bag itself. And then an RV water filter. But this allows you to hook up to a hose and kind of filter your potable water for things that you want to fill your water jugs with. If you don't your water jugs, you just want an extra ounce of security and run it through a filter first. Definitely a good option. But we keep that with us and, and we've used it quite a few times. All right, almost through this bin, we got a few more items. We got about a half a roll of paper towels left and some plastic bags and we can reuse those plastic bags for anything. We have three rolls of toilet paper. Recommend finding some biodegradable stuff and that should get us through plenty of time out on the trail. And a couple propane tanks for the propane stove. We have a couple more. These tend to last us about one or two days depending on the wind. If it's really windy, they'll go, they'll go much quicker, so. Evaluate how much propane you're gonna need. These all fit in the bin too. Like I said, this gave us a chance to kind of take inventory. There's a few things in here that I can see already that we may not need, may not need to pack, and maybe want to swap out. But definitely evaluate your situation and develop a camping box that allows you to get out on the trail much faster because you know that you're just gonna grab your cooler, your clothes, and this camping box, and you're good to go. Stay with us. Uh, we're about to leave on our trip, and, and we'd love to have you along for that ride. So, like I said, the Georgia Traverse, it should be about four or five days with a stop in Helen. If you know of anything on the Georgia Traverse that we just have to see, please drop in the comments below. We'd love to, to add that waypoint to our total trail. If there are things that you see in this box that you think that we were better off replacing it with, that you have some ideas or some options that you have really enjoyed and found very useful, Definitely send us those. We're, we're always open to modifying and adjusting our loadout to better suit our needs. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Until next time, uh, we'll, we'll see you on the trail.